all that he has is yours. All that he has is yours. Everything in the visible and in the invisible. Look what he says here in 1 Corinthians in chapter 3, verse 21. Therefore, let no man glory in men for all things are yours, whether Paul or Paulus or Cephas of the world, or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. Watch this, verse 23, and, and ye are Christ and Christ is God's. So all things are yours, both the visible and the invisible, all things are yours. And this invisible is yours. Now, where it, it's in the atmosphere, the invisible, that it can only be accessed by faith. And that's one of the biggest reasons the enemy doesn't want you to have faith. Now, I'll read another one in just a minute. One of the biggest reasons. Now, he even tells you in a broad term what's up there and what's yours. It's called the promised land. Now, this is the land that this Bible talks about that's yours. This is the land that Martin Luther King decreed that we as a people will get to the promised land. So it's going to take faith to get there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. All right, now, let's look at this. Um, oh, boy. Okay, let's look at Revelation chapter 5. In Revelation chapter 5, now, just let me know if I'm getting too deep for you. Praise God. I'm telling you what you are, see. It's because us out here scratching, trying to get, well, I don't like because he has so much, and I don't have little, and so forth. Come into the kingdom. Come into the kingdom, and all things are yours. You see what I'm saying? Socialism is trying to govern a people without God. That's what it is. You know, it, it's, it's, it's like you work hard, and I, don't, I, don't, I sleep all day, but I'm gonna still get what you got. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's that. It's, it's cutting God completely out of the picture. And that's where certain people are trying to take us. It's cutting God completely out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But this nation was one nation what? Under God, see, that America was, and wherever you're looking. All right, but look what it says here. And this is Revelation chapter, um, chapter 5. And look at verse 12. And he says this, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Wow. Now, all of those, are, that, that's a whole study. Each one of those is a study. But look at all the things you got. Now, in that group, he wrapped up everything. Everything's in there. Everything's in there. So this enemy doesn't want you to walk by faith because you can access something not only for yourself, but you can access something also for the other person or other people or a, a dying and, and suffering world. And you can access it for them. You can get to it. What, what will it do? Well, with those miracles, look what Peter did with that miracle that happened with him in fishing. He said, hey, I'm leaving everything and I'm following you. <laughs> See? Because it took all the toil out of his life. Toil is designed to just, just weary you and worry you and, and wilter you. It's trying, to, it's trying to bring a person down to a place of, of non-existence. Toil. It's, 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 your body's not, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're made with his hand. You're, you're not meant to be treated like a tractor. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're, you're, you're not that rough and tough. You're, that's why you're seated on the throne. Because you're meant, you're delicate. Even when he made a woman, he made her more delicate. That, that's the word in the Hebrew. He didn't use the same word when he fashioned man as he did woman. He used a whole different Hebrew word. That's why she's so delicate. You've got to treat her delicate. It's not meant to be shouting at and hollering at and abused and all of that. That's, 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 woo, that's against God. And so I'm saying here that, um, so let's look at this, this, this whole idea of, let's, let's just pick one, for example. Let's pick wisdom, all right, with wisdom. All right, why do you want wisdom? Why do you want God's wisdom? All right. Because I can come over here in James, the book of James, and I can see in the book of James here in chapter 3, and I'll look here down here at verse 14. 
But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. Watch this. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. All right? So there is a devilish wisdom. There is a wisdom that is devilish. It comes from usually God, uh, 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 the, uh, the enemy uses, you know, human um, intellect and, and, and tries to impart things that are human intellect to make them use that natural wisdom. Now, let's just look at something. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and let's start reading at verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and let's start reading at verse 4. Now, we already covered the language of the redeemed, okay? And that's the language of, of money, of wealth, of language of of God. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the uh, language that never talks in time. It always talks in faith and so forth. All right, let's look and see what it says here. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's start reading at verse 4. This is the Apostle Paul talking. He said, And my speech and my preaching was not in the words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. What's this? that your faith shall not rest or stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. There's a devilish wisdom. There's a wisdom of men. Okay? Watch this. Howbeit, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. So here are leaders of this world speaking wisdom. Paul said, I don't speak that wisdom because that's the wisdom of this world. Okay, it seems logical. That's why it says in Proverbs chapter 14, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that way is destruction. It's death. All right, look what it says. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which... God ordained before the world was a world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Now see what he's saying. Jesus operated by the godly wisdom. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 13, verse 54, Whence has this man this wisdom in these mighty works? So he operated in the wisdom of God. Now, check this out. Because he was operating in the wisdom of God, it's above the wisdom of men. Now, how did he get that wisdom? By faith. He's got his instructions of what he should do by faith. How did I get the wisdom in terms of, 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 of organizing a business school? by faith. How did I get knowledge that there is going to be a Christian entrepreneurship school so forth? Boom, by faith. All right? Now, um, can I just show you something to take a, take a little, little rabbit trail here for a minute? If you, if you look at the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 20, counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. Watch this. But a man of understanding will draw it out. You see what he's saying? See, counsel what to do about this situation. It's like deep water. But a man of understanding
understanding will draw it out. And this idea of drawing it out, knowing that it's there. And, and God says that he, according to uh, Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 6, for the Lord giveth wisdom, and out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding, he lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. Why? Because it's to be accessed by the church. And notice here's Jesus. He's walking with God. And notice what happened here. He accessed God's wisdom. Now watch this. And it was above Satan because Satan knew that if you operate in his wisdom, he can stop you. But if you operate in God's wisdom, he can't stop it. He can't stop it. And how did I get God's wisdom? Watch this. I prayed in tongues. They said, you cannot have church in that shopping mall. I said, wait a minute, we bought the mall. This is our mall. I know, but the, 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 uh, um, the city council voted, you cannot have church there. I said, Lord, what do I do? Now understand, wisdom will get past any obstacle. It'll fix anything. God put wisdom in the invisible for you for the obstacles that you're going to be coming into. In 2 Kings chapter 4, wisdom is what she drew on. Man of God, uh, my husband did fear the Lord and now he's dead and what are you going to do about it? They're about to take my kids and put them in the bondage. We've, we're out of money. We're so far in debt. He said, go borrow some vessels. What do you have in your house? He said, I don't have but a little oil. He said, that's enough. Carver didn't have anything but a peanut. That's enough. Wisdom knows how to make something out of nothing. I praise God. That's what I'm telling you. He could solve your debt problem in a day. He did hers. But what did she do? She put a demand on that wisdom. See, it's like water. You got to draw it out. And most God's people, they settle for human wisdom. Hey, well, let me go borrow, and let me go do this, and so forth and so on. I was like that. No, I, I've been out of debt for 30 years. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, I, I, I learned the wisdom. They gave me that uh, 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 in IBM, and here, you know, I thought I was going to have the medical territory and sales and, and computer sales. And I came back from training, and they said, hey, Bill, that's been a switch. I said, what's up? They said, well, we decided to let Steve keep having, let him maintain the medical and give you associations. I said, wait a minute, associations? He said, yeah, you know, nonprofit organizations. I said, now you expect me to make a living on nonprofit. L li listen at that, nonprofit. I mean, what, what is the motivation for them to buy a computer, you know? Let me tell you, I got born again and wisdom kicked in. Now notice what it says here in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 28, and the base things of the world and the things which are despised has God chosen. Yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. Why? So that no flesh can glory in this presence. Now look at the next verse, for people leave that one out. But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. So it says Christ. Wisdom is in Christ. Where is Christ? Christ in you, the hope of glory. So notice, I had to draw wisdom, which was already loaded in the invisible, put in Christ, and Christ got in me. Now I got to bring him out. But I'm understanding. See, I know that the wisdom is in me, and I know I can draw it out. Then I read over in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, I can ask for interpretation. And God interpreted me. He said, I want you to read Romans chapter 13, verse 1 through 7 to the mayor. Wow. I read it to the mayor. Didn't know what that was going to do. I read it to the mayor. And I had to push my way to get an appointment. I read it to the mayor. Mayor jumped up. Whoa. Next thing I know, Reverend, we're going to let you go in there tonight. But this is the only night we're going to let you have church in that shopping mall. <laughs> Look at us. Look at how many souls we've saved in this shopping mall. Thousands. Look what we've done at the headquarters for, for BWM, headquarters for J, uh, uh, Joseph Business School, headquarters for our, our ministry school, headquarters, so forth and so on. 
look how it's spreading. Putting ministry school up in Haiti. Putting it, I'm saying, look how it's spread. BWM, another uh, uh, location in South Africa and so forth. I mean, look, look what God's doing. This, this is wisdom now. Because if you're not operating wisdom, the devil can stop it. Because he's the one that thought of it. <laughs> you see? But you got to get wisdom. So, Jesus operated in wisdom. Come on down to Proverbs chapter 4, please. Proverbs chapter 4. So Jesus operated in wisdom. And because he did, Satan didn't know what he was doing. He thought by killing Jesus, he was going to wipe his whole ministry out. No, he gave birth to it. Praise God. Wow. Do you hear what I'm saying? Oh, wow. And put him up on that cross, and when that blood and water came out of his side, when they stuck that spear, boy, the church came out. Glory to God. He was, he was given birth. So I'm saying he was there, and instead of, 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 of them doing away with him, boy, let me tell you, the, out of that tomb, uh, the, something new was birthed. Wow. And, and what was that? That's the wisdom of God. It never fails. Over in Matthew chapter 11, it says wisdom has children. Yeah, it always has good results. And I'm saying that to you now because if you're in a country or if you're in a city or if you're in a community or something and, and, and the, the, the money is, is short, the economy is down so forth, that is not your problem. The problem is lack of wisdom. So what you got to do is get that wisdom back. And that wisdom is coming to you as I speak. You're beginning to understand it, and you're getting to have faith for it. See, how can they hear without a preacher? See, I'm preaching to you, and now faith is coming to access wisdom like you've never had it before. Now, any problem, big or small, is solved by wisdom. It doesn't make any difference what it is. All right, in 1 Kings chapter 10, this is when Solomon is now having the Queen of Sheba to come all the way from her uh, side of the country, a, a part of the globe, to hear his wisdom. Watch this, what it says here in verse 3. And Solomon told her all her questions. What questions did she have? How to run this? How to get rid of this in my, in my, in my country? How to, how to prosper in my country? How came to Solomon. Wow. Look what she brought with her. Look at verse uh, 10. And she gave the king 120 talents of gold. Now that's beside other thing. Why? Because wisdom always attracts wealth. Problem is not money. Problem is wisdom. Here's what he says in Proverbs. In Proverbs, isn't this good? Isn't this good? Even Esther. If you look at Esther, and remember, Esther had to be taught, told by her uncle Mordecai, go before the king. You go before the king because you are in his palace and you are set there for such a time as this. You are set there to get us free. 
Now go before him. Well, she fasted three days and so forth, put on a royal apparel, and went before him. Well, when she got there, she was not invited. Now, if you're not invited into the king's throne room, you can get your head cut off. Your head will be rolling back out of the door, you know. But here she is, and she got there with him. And, and here she was before the king, and, and you would think that here she is before the king, and the king said, what can I do for you, Esther? Now, Esther could have said, wicked Haman is killing. He got a plan to kill all the Jews and so forth and so forth. She didn't say that. Over in, uh, oh boy, I don't have Esther here. Okay, but anyway, Esther, look at it in chapter 5, and look what she said. I'm cooking up a dinner, <laughs> and I'd like to invite you to it. <laughs> Praise God. See that wisdom? See, if she had probably stepped outside of the wisdom of God and stepped into the wisdom of men, she could have gotten her head cut off or, or Haman never would have backed off or the laws of the king never would have been rescinded or changed or a higher law made so that it could save Israel. Never. And what people do get under that pressure and start thinking like I'm a natural man. And that <laughs> is a mistake. That's where the enemy tries to push you, tries to push you into a corner of pressure so you start thinking like a natural man. But if you take time, then if need be, just go ahead. Notice what Solomon did to get that wisdom to start pouring through. He sowed seed for it, and you can sow seed for the wisdom of God. It's part of your inheritance. Anything that you're inheriting, you can sow seed for. So you can sow a seed for it. Praise God. And get, well, I'm sowing this seed for the wisdom of God for this matter. See? And God will make it so that when this thing works, it's working in a way that Satan cannot stop it. Let's just cover one more thing. Praise God. So notice God already has laid up sound wisdom for who? For you. For the righteous. Why? The righteous is supposed to be in authority. Why? So the people can rejoice. What do the righteous have access to? They have access to the wisdom of God. What can they solve? Pandemic? Solve anything. Doesn't make any difference how big, how small the, the, the problem is. Wisdom can solve it. Why? Because it's already been solved. It's, the answer is put away in heaven. And you and I are to access it by faith. And we're going to access that wisdom. And when we access that wisdom, we're going to have all the answers we need. Praise God. And let me just say this. Faith is the language of the redeemed. Faith is the language of the redeemed. You're not talking about what's going to happen. Because you know vertically it's already happened. And so what you're talking about is bringing what's already happened into your life. So, Mark 11, 24, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, just believe that you receive them and you shall have them. When do you believe you receive? Not when you feel it. Not when you hope that, you, no, you believe you receive it when you pray. This message that I've got for you today I got it for you today because I believe I received it. Now, can you verify it in a court of law? No, you can't. You can't feel, touch, taste, smell, you can't, nothing in the natural to show you that you receive it, except you'll see the results. One man said it like this, if faith has no um, a, a, a proof, then it's a fake. Don't people try, well, I believe I've received, okay, right, okay, how long is that going to go on? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? All right, let me give you one more thing. Revelation sees what you want, and wisdom tells you how to get it. Revelation sees what you want, and wisdom tells you how to get it. See, God says the things that are revealed are for you. So what you do is get in this Bible, find out where, what your inheritance is, and then you begin to meditate it. What did meditation do? It now it's bringing forth that revelation of that in your heart. Now once you could see it, now I'm not, and you, I mean you can close your eyes sometimes and you can you can see this thing, you know. But I'm saying once it's revealed to you, you have access to it. See the the problem is wisdom. Proverbs chapter 4, and start reading at verse 5. But he says, get wisdom. It's the principal thing. And watch what he says wisdom will do. It'll promote you. Watch this, and bring you to honor. He says, wisdom, one hand is long life, another hand is riches and wealth, or whatever have you. But wisdom has that with it. So you access wisdom by faith. God, I'm looking for your wisdom. 
of James chapter 1. If any man like wisdom, let him ask of God, man or woman. Look what he says here. This is in Joshua chapter chapter 6. I'll start reading it first, verse 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. Watch this. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into your hand Jericho. Now you're supposed to see it now. The battle has not been fought, but it's been fought in heaven. Heaven already has it played out. It already has instructions as to how you can do it. When we brought in the Joseph Business School, it's, um, Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17 says, I am the Lord thy God that teaches thee to profit, watch this, and lead thee by the way that you go. She has revelation and wisdom working together. Look what he says here. And you shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and you shall round about the city once, and thus you shall do for six days. Notice he's given them instructions. So one will show you what you got, and then wisdom will show you how to get what you've got. Both. So, I'll end with this prayer, and I'd like you to pray this prayer every day for seven days. This is found over in First Corinthians, pardon me, Ephesians, in chapter 1. I would like you to pray it every day for seven days. He says this in verse 16, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Okay? So, that particular scripture, Father, I thank you that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, given to me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. All right? So pray that for seven days and watch what's going to happen. You're going to start seeing things that you've never seen before. Watch this. And start getting strategies you've not had before. Okay? Now, don't leave off the others. Favor, I say favor every day. Father, I thank you. The favor of God surrounds me like a shield, produces supernatural increase, promotion, restoration, honor, increased assets, greater victories, recognition, prominence, preferential treatment, petitions granted, policies and rules change.